I'm going to go over exercise 18 and what you need to do to complete this exercise. Let's start with number one. Mayland et al. do not provide the degrees of freedom in their study. Use the degrees of freedom formulas provided at the beginning of this exercise to calculate the group degrees of freedom and the error degrees of freedom. Okay, so these are just other terms for the between groups and within groups degrees of freedom. So for ANOVA, we have a couple different formulas for degrees of freedom. And we have formulas for the number of participants and formulas for the uh, number of groups. So let's go over those. So when we're doing a, a one-way ANOVA, we have just the number of groups minus one. But when we're considering more than one factor, we would look at between groups and within groups degrees of freedom. And the formula for between groups degrees of freedom would be k minus one, where k equals the number of groups. And the formula for within groups degrees of freedom would be the total sample size minus the number of groups. So these are the two degrees of freedom that you need to figure out for this problem, the between group and the within group degrees of freedom. Number two, what is the F value and P value for spiritual need patient? Okay, so what we need to do here is look at the text that's reported and find what the F value is and what the P value is for the result for spiritual need patient. And what do these results mean? So we need to interpret this. So one, is this statistically significant? So compare that p-value to your level of significance and make a decision about whether or not it's a significant result. And then interpret this. What is this telling you about the difference between the three groups of hospices? Is there a difference between those three? Okay, number three. What is the post hoc result for facilities for a hospital with LCP versus a hospital without LCP. So we can look at table two for this. So we need to look and see what that result is. Now a post hoc test is a test that we do after our analysis has been completed. Once we've run our analysis, we might do some additional testing on that analysis that we ran to see if it was valid or if there were any problems with the analysis that we did. So here we just need to look at the text in table two and look at the post hoc result for hospital with LCP versus hospital without LCP. So look for that p-value there. Next, is this result statistically significant? So to determine that, we're gonna compare the p-value that's reported with our significance level and make a decision about whether or not it's significant based on that comparison. And then the last thing is, in your opinion, is this an expected finding? So based on what the study was telling you and what you already know, do you, do you expect to find this result or was this an unexpected finding? Number four, what are the assumptions for use of ANOVA? So we have five assumptions for ANOVA. These are listed in the chapter and they're also listed in the lecture slides on ANOVA, so you can find them in either of those places. Number five, what variable on table three has the result F equals 10.6 with P less than 0 0.0001? So you need to look at that table and find the variable that has a result equivalent to this, an F value of 10.6 and a P value of less than 0 0.0001. Next, what does this result mean? So interpret this result. Is it statistically significant? So compare it to your P value to see if it's statistically significant. And then the next thing is, what does this mean in terms of the differences among the hospices that we're looking at? So interpret that finding based on the result. And if it's statistically significant, is there a difference among the hospices? Number six, 
ANOVA was used for analysis by Mayland et al. Would T tests have also been appropriate? Provide a rationale. So this question wants you to kind of explain what's the difference between ANOVA and T test. So when would you use an ANOVA instead of a T test? So look at the characteristics of the data that they had here. How many groups did they have? Uh, did they meet the assumptions of ANOVA? And just give a little analysis on whether ANOVA was better than T-test or if they could have done a T-test instead. And remember, every time we perform tests, we have a chance of making an error. So keep that in mind when you're looking at whether you should they should have done a T-test instead of the ANOVA. Number seven, what type of po post hoc analysis was performed? Is this post hoc analysis performed more or less conservative than the chef test? So you just need to look in the text and see what they performed. And what they did, what they performed was the Tukey. And they looked at the Tukey Honestly Significant Difference test, also abbreviated HSD. So just kind of compare this to the chef test if it, you're not finding it in the chapter. Maybe just Google the two. And I, I don't care if you don't, are experts in what these two tests are. Just uh, kind of give a little explanation of each, maybe a sentence or two. Number eight, state the null hypothesis for care for the three study groups. So our null hypothesis is always going to be that there's no difference. So just put this into terms of the study that they're looking at. They're looking at the three groups of hospice. And so phrase that in terms of the null hypothesis that there's not going to be a difference. Should the null hypothesis be accepted or rejected? So I like the term fail to reject better, but what's, uh, what we're going to do to make this determination is compare the p-value that was for the result to the significance level that was set of 0 0.05. So compare those two and see what you think about whether or not it was uh, statistically significant. If it's a significant finding, we will reject the null hypothesis. So to say whether you're gonna reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis and tell me what you're basing that decision on. So we would base this on the comparison of the p-value to the significance level. You could also look at the critical value. Um, the p-value is a little more intuitive and you have that information more readily available. So are we rejecting the null hypothesis or not? Number nine, what are the post hoc results for care? So you need to look in the text and just write down what the post hoc results for care are. And they give you the p-value for those results and you need to interpret whether or not that's statistically significant. So which of those results were statistically significant? And again here we're going to compare the p-value to the significance level to make that determination. And what did these mean? So put this into terms of the study that they're looking at. What is this telling you about the difference between the three hospice groups? Is there a significant difference between those or not? Number 10, in your opinion, do the study findings presented in tables 2 and 3 have implications for end-of-life care? So here, take what you know about these areas in general and then also what you've learned about statistics and what was presented in this study and just do some analysis. Is this generalizable? So we might look at the sample size and see if it was large enough. We might look at the demographics of the group if those are presented to us. Is that representative of the overall demographic? Are there some um, cultural specific things that might keep it from being generalized to a larger population? So just all these things are things that we might need to look at or that we would look at when we're trying to determine if we could generalize these results or not. So give me you know, maybe two to three sentences on what you think about whether it's generalizable. And that is what we need to do for exercise 18. You can write your answers into the sheet that I have provided or you can always type up and create your own 
if you would like to.